The success of your prayer depends on the state of your heart. We cannot share in the spiritual privileges of his grace if our hearts are disturbed, troubled. Grace and peace to you all in Jesus' mighty name. Welcome, people of God, to another edition of Take Care of Your Hearts here on God's Heart TV. A time for us to dig deep into the living and the life-changing Word of God. Now, today's message deals with such an important subject, prayer. And I pray that as you receive this message today, your faith would be lifted up to a higher level in Christ. So, be blessed as you watch this message titled, The Heart of Prayer. Prayer is not merely saying words. Prayer is a relationship that exists between God and his children. Let me put it like this. Communion with Christ springs from union with Christ. This simply means prayer is a way of life. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, prayer is a way of life. Okay, let me try and be practical. What do I mean by this? I mean live and pray. Walk and pray. Eat and what? Pray. Jump and what? Go to work and what? Pick your phone. Hello, how are you? And what? Greet your neighbor. How are you? And what? Pray, do everything, and this is what's one life for Christ. I mean, life in Christ is all about. Walk and pray. Greet and pray. Sleep and pray. Sit down and pray. Stand up and pray. Do everything, and... Let's talk to ourselves. The problem we have today is that we don't see prayer as a standard for our lives. Let, let, let me put it like this. We don't see God as the standard for life. We only see him as a helper in times of trouble. Lord, I'm sick, heal me. God, I'm poor, bless me. Lord, my marriage is about to crash, restore me. We don't see God as the standard for life. We only see him as a helper in times of trouble. We see faith as a, a panic button that we push only in times of trouble. And that is the reason why we have certain occasions for prayer at times of specific need. So I'm here to let you know today a very simple but profound principle. The heart of prayer is prayer from the heart. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, the heart of prayer is prayer from the heart. This will lead us to the title of today's message, The Hearts of Prayer. Turn with me to the book of Ephesians, chapter 6. I would encourage you when you get home to read the entire chapter, but I'm going to pick from verse 18. And the Bible says this. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions. Tell your neighbor all occasions. It doesn't say some occasions. It doesn't say when there's no money in the pockets. 
It doesn't say when there's no food on the table. It doesn't say when trouble strikes the business. It says pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Now, we'll quickly go to another very well-known verse, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I'll read from verses 16 to 18. The scripture says this, Rejoice always. Pray continually. Some versions say pray without ceasing. Pray continually and give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now, these scriptures clearly tell us we should pray without ceasing. Pray on all occasions. Pray continually. But ask yourself this question. If you pray only with your lips, can you pray without ceasing? Just with your mouth. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of David, have mercy on me. Bless my home. Bless my family. You will, run out. You will not be able to continue praying with your lips without ceasing. Your body, you cannot pray with your body without ceasing, engaging your body in prayer, hot prayer, fire prayer. You will get tired soon. But the scripture says pray without ceasing. What is it referring to? Your heart. The prayer of the lips should just be an overflow of the prayer from the heart. This is what the Bible means. I pray without ceasing. You have to engage your heart. Keep your heart busy. Take hold of your heart. Do you know the reason why? If you don't engage your heart, your heart will engage you. And what do I mean by saying our heart will engage us? Our heart will engage us to think of our own interests rather than God's interests. As I'm preaching to you, I should be praying. And as you are listening to me, you should be praying. Engage your hearts, or your hearts will engage you. This is the reason why today you can be here sitting in the church service, suddenly ding, 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 a text message can come in. That text message can disorganize you and even cause you to leave the service. Many people were supposed to be here today, but... They were not here because of circumstances, situations, hardship. They didn't come to church. This is the reason why you can be praying. If you just hear some bad news, you abandon the prayer. You can be praying. You just receive an unpleasant message. Your prayer is interrupted. People of God, prayer should flow naturally in our hearts the way blood flows naturally through our veins. It shouldn't be according to circumstance or, or situation. Our situation should not dictate the direction of our prayer. What do I mean? You can be sick and yet say, thank you, Jesus. You can be poor and yet give praise to God. Your situation should not dictate the direction of your prayer. If circumstances are the reason for your prayer, circumstances will be the reason to stop your prayer. Maybe we don't understand exactly what I'm talking about. If this apple is the reason for my prayer. This apple and what happens to it will also be the reason to stop my prayer. Okay, I want God to give me this apple. God, please Lord, son of David, give me this apple. I need this apple for my life. I need this apple for my business. Lord Jesus Christ, release this apple unto my life. If the apple does not come, in the way you expect it, or the time you expect it, 
you are likely to get discouraged from praying. Or by the time you hear that, oh, my brother here has some other apples. Let me try his own. Because this one is not coming in the way I expect it. You adopt alternative apples. On the contrary, if you are praying, God, give me this apple. And the next moment the apple comes, you will likely begin to relax and become lukewarm in your spiritual life. If the apple is the reason for your prayer, the apple will be the reason to stop your prayer. This is why as Christians, do you know what our principle should be? Whether apple or not, thank you, Jesus. Whether he heals me or not, he is my healer. Whether he delivers me or not, he is my deliverer. Whether he rescues me or not, he is my rescuer. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Because our relationship with God is not based on this apple. It's based on the giver of the apple. Take the same principle. If praise is the reason for your prayer, praise will also be the reason to stop your prayer. If you are sick in your body, instead of asking God, heal me, heal me, Lord, you begin to praise him in the midst of your sickness. You will praise him to the end. I mean, you will be healed in God's time. One can pray amiss, but one can never praise amiss. That's why you have to to keep your heart busy praising God. Engage your heart by talking to God. Keep your heart busy with the things of God or your heart will keep you busy with the things of the world. Remember, our heart is the contact point for God. It's his landing points. It's where he will rest. It's where he will reside. Our heart, the great thing God looks at and requires is the heart. The success of your prayer depends on the state of your heart. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, the success of your prayer depends on the state of your heart. We cannot share in the spiritual privileges of his grace if our hearts are disturbed, troubled. If your heart is troubled and you pray, you are praying of yourself. It's what the Bible says in Psalm chapter 66, verse 18. The scripture says that sin regarded in the heart. It could be offense, It could be a bitterness, resentment, revenge, pain of the past, unforgiveness, sin regarded in the heart will ruin the success of your prayer. Ask your neighbor, say neighbor, say neighbor, what? is the state of your heart. Because your heart is the prayer room. God listens to us when we pray. And he responds in relation to the state of our hearts. People of God, it's not the noise you make in prayer that produces the results. It's not how loud you shout, Lord Jesus Christ! That doesn't bring the results. A man of prayer may not be a man of faith because there is a difference between saying words 
and praying prayer. One can be a man of prayer, but perhaps not a man of faith. Let me give you a quick example. I'm sure you have seen before when our Father in the Lord, Prophet T.B. Joshua, when he's encountering some unclean spirits in the course of his ministration, sometimes when he encounters them from a distance, he will just look at them and say, Kai! And the demons fly. Have you seen that? Just like that. So you from the, the Pharisees and Sadducees of today will open the Bible and say, where is it written? Where, where, where is this written? But what they fail to realize is that demons don't respect grammar. They respect power. Our grammar in prayer is usually just to impress men, not to reach God. Whatever you say under the influence, under the check and the conduct of the Holy Spirit, he will affect it. And the Holy Spirit cannot share with their hearts that is full of offense, grudges, pain of the past. What is the state of your heart? When the state of your heart is of God, I mean when your heart is at its best for God, then nothing, I repeat, nothing can separate you from God. Why? Because you have seen him as the standard for your life, not just a helper in times of trouble. If you know how much you need God, if you know how much you need God, you would realize that there is nothing too little for you to pray over. You should acquire the habits of praying over little things as well as big things. Not just when you face a situation beyond your control that you run to God. No, walk and pray. Eat and pray. Watch the television and pray. Browse the internet and pray. Do everything and pray. Look, if you walk and pray, you would not go to a place where Jesus would not be welcomed. If you talk and pray, you would not engage in idle gossip or fill the air with empty words. If you watch and pray, you would not give attention to things that would violate your conscience or pollute your heart. Because God will never move us to pray for something that is not sanctioned by Scripture. So I leave you with this final word of exhortation. Please, pray constantly. Pray without ceasing. With hymns, spiritual songs, making melodies in your hearts to the Lord. For when you engage your hearts with God, he will engage your life with peace joy, and good success. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for the word of God. This subject of prayer is, is so important, people of God, because so often we, we reduce this concept of prayer to, to an action at a specific time. You know, I, I pray when I wake up in the morning, or I, I pray before I go to bed, or I pray at church, and yes, that's good. But a Christian must not only pray every day, he must be in an attitude of prayer at all times. This is what the message is dealing with, cultivating that attitude of prayer, that consciousness of God's presence in every step of the journey of life. Because remember, prayer is an expression of our faith and faith is not a hobby <laughs> you know a hobby that maybe we engage in in our spare time you know when we don't have anything maybe really important to deal with it's not just a hobby no faith is a lifestyle it's a lifestyle of total dependence on god for everything and if that 
consciousness of God's presence is built in your life. It influences everything. It influences your mode of conduct, your daily conversation, your, your very way of life. Because remember this principle, people of God. Your life ultimately reflects what is in your heart. So, check yourself. If, for example, you find yourself losing easily the battle to temptation, succumbing to, to the temptation of fear or pride or lust or grumbling and complaining, if you easily succumb to that temptation, don't just think that intensifying the prayers of your lips will change the situation. Look, that's good. Pray them more, but check your heart first. I remember a wonderful message from Prophet TV Joshua where he said, a great part of my time is spent getting my heart in tune for prayer. Because a heart, that's, that's the communication point for God. The contact point for God, since a heart is that communication point, we must get our hearts in tune with God, in alignment with God, in agreement with God. How? By taking the scripture we read, this message we have received right now, taking that message, meditating on it, turning it over and over and over in our hearts, so that our hearts act on the word. <laughs> and then, people of God, prayer will be as natural to you as breathing is. That's where God wants to take us to in our walk of faith. We thank God once again for his word. And as you take care of your hearts in the light of God's word, I pray that you would continue to seek his heart and see your life clearly in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Hallelujah. <laughs>